All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Professional Volunteer Podcast. And on today's episode, I have what has become known to be the Professional Volunteer Trifecta. <laughs> right? Didn't you name it that, Kara? <laughs> I yeah. did. So I've got Kara back and I've got John back. What up? What's up, guys? Hi. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Hanging in there? Pretty good. Yep. Awesome. We're here. We're, we're going to talk about water supply today, right? This sounds intriguing, exciting. I'm pumped. Argu argumentative. I'm argumentative. Um, yeah, so John put a post up on his Instagram the other day, which I'm going to be honest with you, I, I read it like four times and I was like, I don't get the second line. What the it, F is he talking about? Send me a nasty text message. Yes, I said. <laughs> there's a lot of infighting. There's, there's infighting a, in the professional yeah, volunteer trifecta. There lot, yeah, there was a little infighting going on. Um, and anyway, so he, he lives in a slightly different world than Kara and I do. Um, not that we don't dabble a little bit in both worlds, but we're definitely more rural than John is down in Jersey. Um, well, this was the question. I'll, I'll. All right, so let's let's I'll kick it right it off with the question. All right. So, what do you do? Does the first engine light? You're going to a work and fire, private dwelling, residential house fire, whatever you want to call it. Residential fire. Mm -hmm. Does the first engine hit the hydrant on the way in and lay in, or do you pass the hydrant and work off the tank water? Now, I know there's a million factors that go into that. Um, and that's why I said it doesn't count if you have to hand jack it. So like if the, hy if the hydrant's like two houses away and the chauffeur can hand jack it, that doesn't count. It doesn't hand. count. Gotcha. I'm talking like laying in 500 feet. I missed that part. See, that was the part I missed in the, in that, in that oh, whole. I only have so thing. much. Right. Yeah. Have... I know. <laughs> like, I know. You have eight, uh, so many characters that you can use. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the question. Okay. And what was your re reply from the people that knew what you were talking about? It was about 50-50, right? Oh, wait, excuse me. It was 51-49. 51. <laughs> 51. <laughs> this is so crazy to me. I don't know. It was 51-49. All right. So we so don't want to. 49 I got a few messages that were friendly. Hey, great. You know, great this. We do this. Whatever. Um, the bottom line is it's a case-by-case -case basis. And it right. It's driven by policy and training. And that was my whole thing with the follow-up video was, um, you know, training your officers and training your mind to be able to make split-second decisions because that decision is going to affect how the rest of the fire goes. Absolutely. If, if, you pass yeah. the, if you pass the hydrant and you run out of water, you're going to look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not, and not only maybe kill somebody, but, um, you know, but then if you hit the hydrant and it's, you know things don't work out right then now you're wasting time at the hydrant so like there's so many different ways you could talk about that right uh, now i saw somebody commented on i think it was on your post maybe it was on your video um regarding not tapping the hydrant stopping wrapping the hydrant going and then the second engine comes in and actually makes the connection right which is um I've done that a few times. In my old apartment, we had, we had quite a few hydrants. I mean, the village was all hydranted. P parts of the town were hydranted. Um, you know, making a, uh, hit, hitting the hydrant on the way in and laying in definitely wasn't a um, standard operating procedure. It was kind of, like you said, a case-by-case -case basis based on what the officer saw, what the chauffeur of the first engine coming in saw. Um, yeah, so have, like a, you can't have a policy, that's right? Right. No, and that that's what surprises me is that people get so vehement about these answers when. Wait, what do they get? I, vehement. <laughs> wow. I feel like every time I come on here, I also offer you guys a vocabulary lesson. That's yes, $10. vehement. That was, that's a ten dollar word, huh? Are you writing it down? <laughs> yeah. Make sure you write it down. How long we get that one in the whole story? We get an anatomy and we get an anatomy and physiology lesson with the poster in the background. All right. Yeah, those, fire those, history. Those of you who when you, when, St. Patrick. <laughs> when you watch this on YouTube, you'll know what we're talking about. And now we're fire getting, EMS. Yep. There you go. Put those Love hands it. together. Love it. Love it. 
Uh, anyway, I think that it's surprising to me that people are so vehement about it must be this way because yeah. Yeah. It, it, you, you, I don't know that you really can. You can have, you know, protocols and there's the whole, you know, engine company ops, you know, like arrive alive, secure supply, proper lines, proper advancement, proper placement, you know, like you can have those little mnemonics and things like that, but uh, you do have to maintain that situ situational awareness and realize that your uh, every scene is going to be different. Situational awareness. Agreed. Yeah. Tools in the toolbox, right? That's what I yeah. like to say. Tools in the toolbox. Everything is, every situation is not going to be the same. Every scenario is not going to be the same. You can't, you can't write a textbook for every response and say, this is how it's going to go step A through Z and you better follow these steps. So you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Right. Well, I was right. talking to one of my guys at work. He's, a, he's been a fireman for probably almost 40 years. And, um, they had a they had a house fire during the day. Pulled up. I mean, it was one of the McMansions, and the thing was off to the races, like bumper to bumper. It was going down to the, you know, it was burning down to the studs on one part of the house when they got there. Right. Um, and he made the call, which is amazing. I think it's an amazing call to hit it with the deck gun. First engine right in, 750 gallons, and dump it, dump the the deck gun on it while they're stretching lines and stuff. Some people are like. Oh my God! You know you, it's that's hitting it hard from the yard, bro. Yeah, You're oh what God, are you, you doing? Oh Jesus! We can't do that. It, it was, and and I'm all about that. Um, yeah. Listen, if if you're not going in, you're not going in that until the fire is darkened down. You're gonna get somebody killed. There's no entrapment. Knock the shit out of it, and then you while you're stretching your lines, hooking up to the hydrant, and then go do your thing. Big hey. fire, big water. I agree. That's firefighter one stuff, right? There. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But then, you know, you're, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to turn in your hard charger card, and <laughs> and 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 everybody's going to chastise you for for hitting it, you know, hitting it from the outside. You they might as well it. just put on that Euro helmet right now. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to exactly. say that. How long? You, What's the time? Sixteen minutes. That's how yeah, long. Uh huh. <laughs> she's just she's just she's just salty because I already got on her before i hit the record button. <laughs> roasted me yeah <laughs> I, roast, inch of my I figured i'd be a, i figured i'd be a nice guy and roast her right out of the gate so we could save everybody else from the roasting but yeah, no yeah. there brian falls again yeah, sleep yeah, deprived yeah. brian is getting roasted already oh, so game on deprived. here we go <laughs> did anyone thank you for your service today <laughs> not a soul not I can't a, believe oh that. look at that uh -oh. see we dropped her from the recording <laughs> <laughs> I can't she, believe that you posted those pictures of your uh, bailout with those with those with helmets on. Yeah. Oh my god. I actually had so, so all joking aside, th that's a perfect example too of leather forever. You know, like I've never worn one of those helmets. They look incredibly weird. Right, right. Yeah, we everybody says that, even but me. It's not like Oh my God! You know you're the antichrist because you have that helmet on, or because you, you know, whatever. Hello. Oh, welcome to the program. <laughs> you guys kicked me out for that one euro <laughs> helmet yeah. comment. No, it was one. You're you're sideways. I know. I don't know why either. Uh oh. So no, there actually, so John and I were just talking about. Go ahead, John. Re re remake that. We're getting off water supply, but we'll come back. But uh, already. Said that was so fast <laughs> i said it's very similar to the uh the what are those helmets called the Russian the euro helmets yeah yeah the euro helmets um you know people are like oh my god you're the antichrist for wearing that helmet but you know he's trying them out he's doing a demo you know like you, you got to try new things a little bit like yeah there's the old school firefighting that like you know okay you got to get in there and get dirty pull ceilings but right like just because you hit it with the deck on on a house that's burnt to the studs. Yeah. People are like, oh my God, we don't fight fire from the outside. Like, Shut up. And then the old days, like think about what the building construction was. I mean, you know, it's it's right. different now. If, if you're gonna take however many minutes to get a crew together, especially in volunteer side in the daytime and you've got these new builds. Yeah. What yeah. What's left there, you know? Right, if you're right, pulling right. up, if you're pulling up and the house is down and you could see the studs, you're not saving yeah. the house. Right, right. 
knock the shit out of it and then go in. Do I mean, thing. look, the, fu- the fire I went to last night, you know, the fire district didn't, was in small district, not a ton of manpower, you know. I think it went out as an activated alarm or smoke in the building or something like that, you know, and they roll up and they had a, they had a job. Uh, it, resin? No, commercial, uh-huh. commercial restaurant. And it was up in the, up in the ceiling space, you know, up in the attic space. Cock loft. Yeah. Cock, up in the cock loft, <laughs> up in the cock loft. Okay. It was up in the cock loft and there was no, no access, you know, so they get there limited manpower. Right. What, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, you're sending guys, you're sending guys inside for, for what? They can't even get water on the fire based on where the fire is. They got to find it first. They got to access it, you know, and uh, I was getting comments on my pictures today saying, oh, it looks like, looks like they had to go defensive. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. again, no life hazard. What, right. what, what are we doing here? And look, I love, I like going interior just as much as anybody else, but sometimes you just got to cut your losses and. Yeah. You know. Well, now that's a perfect right. example of do you hit the hydrant on the way in or do you not? You know, if it right. say that came, you know, a cop got there and said it's a working fire, you know, I got fire showing through the roof or whatever. Middle of the night, you know, there's nobody in there. They hit a hydrant on the way in. You know, right, like, right, 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 right. Because you're gonna want that water anyway. Yeah, just don't block the road with your five inch. Yeah. Right. right. Um, Get the five inch out of the road. Yeah, yeah. It's all part of the plant. Like you, and that's why it goes back to being a professional. You sit in that seat. You got to be able to make these decisions. You know, the chief's got to make the decisions, but if he's not there, you're it. And you got to make these decisions that are essentially right. life or death decisions. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, in the, in, in a more rural world, like we're in, you know, I think for me personally, I think that my time spent in a hydranted area kind of put some of those hydrant tactics into my rural rural water supply tactics because whereas other guys that have been doing tanker shuttles and drafting operations and portable ponds for their entire career even though you can use some of those same drop the line and and string in tactics they don't think like they don't think about it you know they're thinking first first engine goes to the house second engine strings from the engine to wherever you're going to set up your portable ponds or run your tanker shuttles or or go to go to a draft site whatever the hell it is you're going to do you know but you can you you know you can meet the best of both worlds and we talked about this offline if i've got a long driveway and i get there first and i'm looking at a house it's whatever you know a ways off the road you know i'm gonna have that first engine drop the five inch at the end of the driveway and string in because i know that i've got no room to turn around i've got no room to operate up by the house you know so now i don't have a hydrant there but um i'm still dropping a line i'm still i'm still stringing up the driveway and then when that second engine comes in and tankers and or tenders depending on where you are in the country it's tankers stop and you know, and you drop a Y there too. You know, that's the other thing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think too that um, you have to let people who know, like we had a company near us. We had all hydrants in our town when I was chief, but the like the western part of our town and then towards another town, they had all tankers. Right. So um, they were like really good with the tanker stuff. So when we knew we had a fire over there, we called them right away. And you got to let them do their thing. You know, like when I called for tankers, we had one fire, I called for tankers and I was like, I don't care what you guys do. Just let, get me water here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Do whatever you got to do. You know, same thing. Like I, whatever you said to me, you guys do chief was, and I was like, yeah, we, I've never even heard of that. Uh, I forget. What, what portable, po- portable ponds. Yeah. yeah. I, forget what, I forget what you texted me. It's probably something. My, nasty. my, my favorite people if I'm a water supply officer, if I, if I get stuck being a water supply officer at somebody else's fire on a real, on a real, real rural fire, um, or is like the old salty senior, uh, yeah. pump operator that's been doing it for like 40 years because you can learn so much from those guys. Oh, I mean, I yes. did, I did a, uh, we did a, a commercial fire in, uh, in a, in a mutual aid fire district a few years back. And I had, I think six or seven portable ponds on the street, all cross laid mm-hmm. into one another with the siphons going. Yeah. And good. You know, it's the freak. I had to take a panoramic picture of it 
to actually get the whole thing in the picture. That's how many portable ponds were laying. We probably had, you know, 7,000 gallons laying in the road. It was, it was crazy. But there was a couple of those like old school guys there that I was like, I know we can do it. I just don't know if I have the equipment to do it with, you know, and they're, they're taking suction lines and flopping them from tank to tank and run an inch and three quarters inside the suction lines to create a siphon. And, the, you know, it was, you can learn so much from some of those guys that have been doing this for, you know, doing this for a long time because a lot of that's lost, you know, and, and it's not taught in the firefighter one program, you know, right. so you, you know, that kind of stuff is. That's your, that's your drill night stuff. That's yeah, the yeah, stuff that you sure. need that's specific to your district specific to the mutual aid areas that you're going to and right. that are coming to you. And one of the things that's uh, I think really important is to um, do those joint trainings, especially with water uh, ops and tanker yeah. ops, you know, for us rurally, you know, we do um, at least once a year have uh, just a tanker practice and we go out and um, tap into our dry hydrants um, from, you know, ponds and, you know, wherever yep. uh, we go to different fill sites with our mini and um, people practice, at, you know, what do you have to do if you have to put hard suction down over a guardrail to get it down into the lake or into the water? You know, do you have your strainer? How are you going to weigh your strainer down so it doesn't, you know, float around and come up and get, you know, a shit ton of air? I mean, like yep. all those things have to be practiced and that's you're not going to get that in a state class um because it's specific to the area that you are firefighting in right 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 and right. know how to draft you know some people don't even know how to draft yeah, right and, ju and just just the interoperability of it i mean so talking about a drill like that Kara, how many times have you gone to a drill like that and realized that you can't even connect with a right. neighboring company because they're right. running some like we, you know everybody's running five inch and you get somebody that shows up with four. like four inch you know like, yeah right. and like do you have the stores for that like do you have that on your engine because you know that you're gonna if you go there on that piece that you're gonna take do you have that equipment for them you know right yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so it's all it's all really really important stuff and 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 you're right it is good drill night stuff that a lot of times is overlooked because you know it's it's not cool. It's not flashy. It doesn't make an awesome social media post, right. you know, but right. it's got to be done. You can I post, post it anyway. You can post a naked <laughs> picture and then, and then swipe yeah. right, and then you'll probably get a lot of likes. Yeah, probably yeah, yeah. next time we do tanker ops, like, yeah. you know, or Chief, next time you do tanker ops, you should just be in a sports bra on your bunker pants because that's how we fight fire, and that will probably get you where you want to be right. yeah listen I'm, I'm probably not gonna Chafed. fill the sports bra out very well and it's it sounds really uncomfortable but yeah listen according to instagram that's the way to fight fire yeah, so. that's you, gotta fight. <laughs> you gotta do it for the likes yeah yeah, yeah do it yeah. for the gram yep 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 so yeah good stuff um <laughs> <laughs> no well, it, it is you know like you said i mean people get you know, people get a little, a little fired up about it, especially when you're, you know, when you start talking tactics. That's the thing. I don't understand why you get angry about it. Like, no, yeah. no, wrong. Like what, what am I? Right. What, what do you mean I'm wrong? Yeah. Right. How is it really cut and dry? I mean, I think even like something as simple as hydrants, I mean, you know, in our district in the village, we have the color coded bonnets and, and that, and then some districts don't do that. Right. You know, I mean, that, do they only wear know. those? Do they only come out on Easter? <laughs> Shut up! It's called a bonnet, you dumbass. <laughs> uh, no, say, no, I hear you. My old town had there were no color. It was just a red and white hydrant. Right. And yeah. Now, and now it's like a blue one. Is this? Yeah. Blue. So yeah, my village was all red. You know, you yeah. you, you just had to know the system. Like yeah. we, we knew which well, hydrants were good hydrants so, and which hydrants yeah. were dead ends and you know, yeah. 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 So do you, so do you know that about your district and then do you know that about the neighboring district where you're going? Yeah. Right. You know, when you're the, when you're the mutual aid engine, that's going to be the next do engine in, do you know what their hydrant flow? I mean, do you know if that's a good hydrant or not? And they are, are they going to tell you on the radio when they're like well, flipping be, out, you know, you hook up to another one and be sucking that other hydrant, you know what I mean? Right. That many times. Right. Um, so it's all about knowing your stuff, like you said in the beginning. And 
it's it's just not you know what I, th- I think we're talking about like the volunteer world that's kind of like yeah, yeah absolutely it's not the fdny where there's a hydrant every every corner of every block mm-hmm. and not that every operation is the same but you know where your water is coming from on pretty much book. every job you go to there's a book in new york city that tells you if you're the third dude truck on a commercial fire or a brownstone or this you're doing this you go right. here and you do that it doesn't work that way in the volunteer world so to say like you hit a hydrant on the way in or you are you know you can't do that right um, right you can't have a policy that says you know the first arriving engine does this because you don't know what's going to happen uh you don't know the manpower you're going to have on it you don't know the experience level you're going to have on it yeah uh, so it's there's just so many factors and just to say like no you're wrong well it all goes back to the it all goes back to the training you know, because my thought process is going to be different than one of the officers, other officers thought process. But if I get on the radio and say, hey, drop the line at the end of the driveway and the chauffeur that happens to be driving the engine that day is like, what the hell is he talking about? You know, and just keeps on driving right up the drive. I, you know, it all comes back to the to the training, you know, to, to practicing this stuff. Um, and practicing pulling that LDH out of the way. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. part of it. Like exactly. that's an yeah. automatic thing. You don't just leave it. You just, you pull it out and then you automatically get it out of the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to do be moving it when there's time. water in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Yeah. It, yeah. It absolutely sucks. <laughs> but you know, again, it, it, so it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're in a 100% hydrated area or if you're in a rural area, you got to know what you're working with. You know, yeah. if you're in a rural area, you got to know, like Kara said, you got to know, where are your draft sites? Where are your dry hydrants? You know, where are the streams that you can pull out of? Where's Mrs. O'Leary's swimming pool in the backyard? It, you know, it's like, there's just so much to know and learn. And if you're not, you know, if you're not paying attention to your district or what your resources are within your district and you get that fire and now you're like, shit, where do I go for water? Yeah. You're probably going to default back on the old tanker shuttle, which is just, keep calling tankers until you've got mm-hmm. 10 of them lined up in the street and you think you're good, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and they're all moving water, you yeah. know, for, for how many, for how many gallons per minute that you need, you know, right. If you, if, and if, and how far is that draft site, you know, if it's a mile or less away and then that's like, you know, wh- whatever the formula is, is like 200 gallons per minute. If it's a mile or, or less away and you need, you know, 500 or whatever for whatever size you know typical house that you have um if it's a typical house and then you're going to need you know a minimum of three tankers to shuttle for that and then you're going to need more the bigger that it is you know and if like we have commercial buildings in our district too that are kind of on the outskirts of town and then we're going to need a shit ton more tankers you know shit ton is a unit of measurement i don't know yeah, if you yeah, guys yeah. know that well and, and, oh, okay. and listen <laughs> i've <laughs> yeah just like that. that send me a shit ton I do. All right. I don't know I, if it's right or wrong. I have I have heard I have heard officers say, yeah. just keep sending me tankers and I'll tell you when to stop." You know. Right. <laughs> but, but they're not. Here's the problem with that. There a lot a lot of times you'll hear a transmission like that, or you'll hear a chief get on the scene and rattle off like five companies for tankers, without a single thought of staging. How am I bringing right. them in and out? How am I, what kind of traffic pattern am I using? You're traffic on some, control, yeah. yeah you're, you're on some single lane backwoods farm road, right? And you yeah. got to think about bringing these things in, turning them around somewhere, getting them right. out to water supply. And the next thing you know, which is even worse, you've got six tankers sitting on your street and you can't get any of them anywhere. Right. You, you, right. you can't move any more equipment. You're locked in, you know, because, because they're not thinking ahead. You know, they're just thinking, oh, I need water. I need water. I need water. So they just start right. rattling off. You send me a shit ton, like Kara said, send me a shit ton of tankers. Well, the shit ton shows up and now you're sitting there and you, you still and don't have- it's a shit show. Yeah, and it's a shit show because you still don't have water supply. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I'm so, uh, how come she got a sh- professional volunteer shirt before me? Because um, I didn't get a Jersey Shore emergency training one. Just waiting. Yeah. I have to order. For that. However, oh. I ordered one from Chief Soller. 
And you didn't get one? No, it'll be there. It'll be there. Like a month. It's about what a it month. takes. Three, about three weeks to a month. It'll be yeah, there. Yeah, it should be coming any day. Yeah, yeah, it should be coming any day. Well, um, I'm waiting for my other shirt, so I'm excited about that one. Order it. I'm, it's coming. All right. I think it all, comes, all of this comes back to like how we like our first ever conversation of training and like acting like a professional, you know, because you see these volunteers, just like that conversation we just got into, you call a shit ton and then it's a shit show and hit the hydrant, <laughs> I'm not hitting the hydrant, the five inch block in the street. Now you can't get anything else in, you know, right. like you're, you're fiddling around at the hydrant and then, and the fire, you know, the house is burning down or you pass the hydrant and you run out of water. Now the house is burning down. You know, it all goes back to training, public perception, professionalism, with any of these decisions you make. Yeah. Like, right. do you, and you go to the roof. Why are you going to the roof? You know, like, that's a topic for another day. But I'm just a point, like, you cut a hole over here and the fire is not over here. And then in five minutes, the fire is over there. Right. Right. Why did you do that? Yeah. Or it's already self-venting, and then you decide to send people up there to come. Yeah, yeah. There's always oh. videos of that all over now. I know. The whole thing of your GoPro or whatever, and you're like, I've seen videos of guys on the roof, and their chainsaw is stalling out because there's so much fire venting out of the the hole. Right. Right. Your job is done. Get off the roof. Right. Right. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. It's a great photo op. Instagram. It is. Yeah, it's doing it for photo. the gram. <laughs> it's doing it for the gram. You get a lot of boob sweat if you do that in your sports bra and bunkers, though. Just FYI. You know so what? There's a shit ton of boob sweat. You know what clickbait is, right? Both of you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. It's clickbait. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I had somebody ask me, send me a message on Instagram the other day. It might have been when I was just talking on instagram live or something but it, it, we were kind of talking it kind of got off on the water supply subject and said you know, have you ever gotten to the scene of that fire where you know you're standing there and you're either waiting for water or you've run out of water and i'm like yeah i, I mean I, I more times than i can count in in yeah. my yeah. career and it sucks like uh. anybody that's been there that has any sort of like moral <laughs> compass and feeling is like this sucks. Like there is nothing That's worse than getting there, dumping your first uh. thousand gallons and not having water supply, or you're there first because you just happen to live around the corner, you know, and you come rolling up to the scene and you're, you're dressed standing in the front yard, like waiting for the first engine to pull up. And you're like, yeah, yeah. they'll be, they're, they're coming. I promise they're coming. Hear the okay. sirens. Here they come. Yeah, you know? Um, but, we don't want to make that even worse, right? By not establishing water supply or not thinking about water supply. Uh, or, not, or not keeping stuff coming on the road because you think you've got it, you yeah. know? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. <clears throat> things happen. Things happen on apparatus, even if you're really diligent about your upkeep and you're doing your equipment checks regularly and things like that. You know, fluke crazy things can happen and, you know, you think you've got it before you have water flowing um, and before you have a hydrant hit somewhere else from the next few piece or whatever, and then you're out of water and then you're just standing there yep. That and you've canceled everything because you thought you got it. You know, that's not ideal. Uh, you no. know, even if you keep stuff coming on a white, you know, and, and you got to send them back once you do have it. I mean, at least you were covering your bases, you know, and thinking about the consumer and the, the people that we serve expect us to have water to put their fire out. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I've always said, I've always said it, whether it's an officer class or just talking, you're, I would much rather send stuff home that I did not need right. than not call what I thought I needed and then have to, you know, call it too late and be right. behind the eight ball. I'd rather be in front of it than behind it. We had a, we had a famous fire. If you remember Wildwood weekend and a certain boardwalk uh, burned down. Yeah. Uh, it was all good over times. The, like should have been during the convention. They would have knocked that thing down on the first do. It was, <laughs> it was just like 50 miles <laughs> North of the, uh, but the first person there 
the first company there says, nah, we, we got it. The, the dispatcher said, do you want your working fire assignment? And he said, nah, we're good. The audio is on YouTube if you want to look it up. Right. He says, nah, we're good. We, we, we got it under control. And about five minutes later, somebody was like, it's like three blocks past you. You better start calling people. Uh, yeah. And obviously, like 10 blocks of the boardwalk burned. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who was making that we got, you know, what were they making that we got this call based on, you know, was it what was, it, I mean, I've been, I've been to those where, you know, you're standing outside and you've got the interior crew going, we got this, yeah. you know, we got, we got to, we got to, we got to knock on this chief, give us five more minutes. And I'm standing outside <laughs> the whole third floor is on fire. And I'm like, now you guys got to get out. You don't got this. No, no, no. We got this. Give us five more minutes. I'm like, that's negative. You don't got it. Yeah. Time to pull out, you know? Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens mm -hmm. to the best of us. So, what else on water supply? Or do we want to just dive into some other stuff because John's feeling feisty tonight. And uh, is there anything you want to get off your chest, John? Um. Well, I'm just perusing Instagram because I was going to show you a picture, but I can't find it now. We're in the safe zone here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't find it now. My problem with Instagram is the frauds. Social media has changed the fire service. And we talked about this a million times, and we're not the only one to talk about it. All of a sudden, you have, like, street cred if you post on Instagram. And, yet, like, nobody even knows you. But if you post, like, the cool things and the popular things, you have, like, street credit. And I right. fucking hate it. And it drives me nuts because like certain people are out there putting out certain messages that I happen to believe in. And they're like, like me, you know, normal fo people, fo you know, we don't have 50 million followers and we're not shared by the okay. cool, the cool accounts. Uh, and it's just, it's a little discouraging, you know? Right. That social media has changed the fire service that much. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's changed, you know, it's changed everything. Everybody has yeah. everybody has instant access to a gazillion different opinions and instant access to share their opinion to however many people they happen to have following them, you know. Yeah. And look, I been there, done it. Like I know, you know, I see some of these profiles where you know people have fifteen, twenty thousand followers. They're bullshit. They're, they're using bots to get them. I know they are, you know, I mean, you don't yeah. have 20,000 legit followers, right. you know, and, 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 do you uh, really do that? Huh? Oh yeah. That's a really huge thing. That? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's and that's, they advertise. And that's a pro, you know, and it's, and it's a problem because, and look, as much as I, I, I love the tradition of the fire service just as much as everybody else. All right. And, but when we talk about some of the things, you know, I don't mind when somebody sends me a message about something like the helmet. I love, to, let's stay on the helmet topic since you guys are so good at the helmet topic. But look, I don't, you know, if somebody sends me a message, I, I just got one the other day I said, Hey, Hey chief. Um, um, we Sweet got, helmet. no, they, it said we got, <laughs> uh, it was, it was something like, um, have you seen space balls? We got, uh, we got a dem we got a demo of the MSA. Some of our guys are trying it. They seem to like it. You know, what are your thoughts on on the helmet you're wearing? You know? Legit question. No yeah. judgment. You know, no, hey, look, we're looking at it, we're trying it. And I'm flat out honest with them. I'm like, As look, aside from the fact you're gonna take a beating in the pub, you know, you're gonna take a beating on social media, you're gonna yeah. take a beating from the leather forever guys, you know. Um there are certain things that I really, really like about it and that my, my firefighters really like about it. You know, what don't they like about it? They don't like people pointing out that they look like they're from space balls. So that's about the only thing they don't, they don't like about it, you know, but you know, even uh, Brandon who I had on a couple episodes ago messaged me after he saw it in a picture. He was like, didn't realize you were wearing one of those. What do you think? You know, now here's a guy who again, believes in tradition, believes in the fire service, but, He's not instantly judging. And that's, and that's the problem. That's the, that's the problem with what you put up about, you know, stretching in, you know, hitting the hydrant on the way in or not hitting the hydrant on the way in, you know, instead of saying, well, you know, the, 
the right answer is there's a million different scenarios and probably more than three quarters of them will work. You got the guys that are like, you got to do it every nope. fire. If you're not doing it every fire, you're, yeah, you're an idiot, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. listen, the helmets, the helmets are, <clears throat> are ugly. They are ugly. We all, nobody is never, right. nobody's ever going to admit that. Although but, I did send Kara a picture today of, uh, of, of one that wasn't so ugly. I didn't think. <laughs> I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you later. I got to try and find it now. <laughs> I just think that people, you know, they're ugly, whatever. I never wore one. I don't have any desire to wear one, but if like, what are you going to do? Like you trying it out? Why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? I, don't, I just don't understand that. Yeah. But, I, I, but, but if you're wearing if, a leather, if you're wearing a leather from 25 years ago, that doesn't even have a freaking crown in it. And it, you right. know, because it's that old. You want right? to get me pissed off? Are you trying to get me pissed off? No, I'm just, I'm just okay. saying. If no. you're, if, no. if you're, if you're wearing a leather that's 25 years old, that A is out of the NFPA because it's 25 years old. B yeah. has no, doesn't no sh protection whatsoever. Yeah, has no protection whatsoever. Just because it looks cool and whatever, maybe it was your dad's or your grandfather's or got passed down to you. I totally, totally respect that. But yep. you're, you're, you're. You're portraying the wrong message. You're an asshole. You're, you're, you're saying yeah. it's okay to wear Honestly, something that's not be. safe. Hold on. Can you see it? There you go. That's yeah. where it should yeah. be. Yeah, put it on the shelf because it's a decoration. Yeah, now. yeah. You're 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 portraying the you're portraying the wrong message. Listen, you know? I'll tell you right now because that this pissed me off. Uh, a firefighter got hurt somewhere. I didn't know him. So Instagram famous. Fire busy company. I'm sure he's a great fireman. He got hurt. Uh, burns, this, that, and the other thing. Hands. There's a GoFundMe page. There's stories about them. Well, you know, this, that, the braver hero, badass brotherhood. Okay. Um, the NIOSH report came out, and I posted the NIOSH report, and I said, this has nothing to do with tactics. Right. He had a head injury, and, his, and the side of his head got burned. His helmet was exactly what you just described, out of date, NIOSH, out of date, no crown, no ear flaps, nothing, right? His hands got burned because he was not wearing firefighting gloves. He was demoing leather gloves, work gloves, mm -hmm. so his hands got burned. And he fell through a floor, and what trapped him in the floor, which the, caused him to get more severe burns... Waist straps? His waist strap was. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. So I, I made a post. You could go look at it on my Instagram. It has nothing to do with the guy personally. It has nothing to do with his tactics. I'm sure he's a great fireman. You, that's not even his fault. That's a systemic problem of leadership allowing that to happen in their firehouse, right? Yeah. If right. you have a set of gear in a volunteer company because you're broke and it's 12 years because the NFPA says 10 years, 12 mm -hmm. years, 15 years, then whatever, right? Right, right, right. Shit happens. But if you're wearing helmets from 1950, you're not wearing firefighting gloves, you have a beard, you're not buckling your waist straps, and you get hurt, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what well, I the whole The whole reason is for the NIOSH reports to come out, for people to read them, is to learn so that we prevent that from happening to somebody else. Well, I got destroyed <laughs> on my Instagram. Well, <laughs> not like I well, get you shouldn't have because that's real firefighting. I mean, the, and honestly, I say this a lot too, and I get I get really roasted for it, and I I get called like whatever, or like you know, not a real fireman or whatever. But I do believe that prevention should be at the base of everything that we do. I mean, that's what we're that's why we're here. We're supposed to be preventing people from getting hurt ourselves. We're supposed to be preventing the community from getting hurt through education, through giving them resources through, um, you know, making the connections in the community. Prevention is not the sexy part of firefighting, but it is the important part of firefighting, you know? And yeah. prevention for us to say that we're trying to teach the public how to be safe and stay safe in an emergency, and then we're not taking ownership of that ourselves as firemen is a real breakdown in our message. Yeah, I agree. And, but, and you know, John, here's the other problem with, with everything that you just said. They're probably, and I'm probably wrong. I'm probably wrong about this, but I'm going to say it anyway. They're, 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 the, the, 
well-educated guys that can sit down and read that report and see them, see what you're saying. Can't like, you can't deny the facts, but right? Right. like that, that's, that's a fact, you know? And look, I know plenty of people that are where, and the helmet's probably the biggest thing that are wearing outdated shit because I mean, my leather, my leather right now that I'm wearing is probably outdated. When I'm done being chief this year, that thing's getting retired, right? It's, yeah. it's done. It's over. It, it's getting hung up on the wall and it's, it's not coming back out. But what really pisses me off is, and this goes back to what we were talking about social media, about all the experts out there. When some freaking kid that hasn't even come through puberty yet, let alone been to, you know, a dozen working fires, sends a message about, you know, whatever you posted that, you know, you're an idiot and you're wrong or, you know, weather forever chief. How can you put that thing on your head? Come on, dude. Like, come on. And, and that's what pisses me off about some of these other social media feeds that are, that are, that are feeding this, you know, just well, constantly well, feeding it. Not only the kids. Right. I got harassed from, from salty, hard charge environment. Hmm. who were like how dare you say that i'm like whoa time out time out don't even know the guy don't know the fire he was in did he not get burned on his hands yes did he not have firefighting gloves on correct yeah end of discussion right right right, end right. Of discussion right uh, when i was chief my best friend showed up to a work and structure fire in the officer's rig of the, uh, in the officer's seat of the rig and he had a beard i've been t i was telling not a you know he was too long if something right, right. Happened, would have been screwed. Right. I was telling him for weeks, you better shave it. You better, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he got there. I said, dude, you're not going in. He was like, you're mm -hmm. kidding me. I'm like, you're not going in. And yeah. after I, he was, he hated me. I said, listen, if something happened to you, forget me being in trouble. I don't care. Right. You're not getting your death benefits. Right. right. Your wife, your, your mother, your father, your son, your, the, it, it all gets wiped out if you don't follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, and that's a big part of the problem. Yeah, a, a, it, a, big, a big part of the problem is we, a lot, a lot of times we skate for way too long and people think it's right. okay to skate. You know, like, it, oh, we've been skating along and nothing's happened. You know, right. we've been flying under the radar. It's not a big deal. You know, you're full of shit about the beard. I can have the beard. It's okay. I shaved for my fit test. It, right. You shave for your fit test. Tell me how that makes any sense i i rolled into my firehouse the night the, the company was there doing the fits and, and the nurse leading the whole thing comes up to me and she says what are you doing with uh what are you doing about guys with facial hair i said what do you mean what am i doing with guys with facial hair they don't get a fit test right. she says at, like at all she says you know because you know we have departments that they'll let them do it anyway i'm like if they have facial hair that impedes the seal of the mask, they do not get a fit test. I said, I don't care what they – don't let them harass you. You send them to me, right? It, it, it ain't happening, you know? And, and we operate the same way. You know, I, some of the guys, will, every once in a while, you'll see they're starting to get a little scruffy. I'm like, yo, we get a fire tonight. You're going to enjoy the yard view. We have people you coming know? to the fire academy to do burns. They're doing live burns, and they got full beards. And the company's like, nah, they're good. The officers, I'm like, not, not in our burn building, they're not. No, nah, no. Nah. Mm -hmm. If they get hurt, I'm not losing my instructor license for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Listen, I, I'm not trying to bash people. I'm not better than anybody. Have I got off the truck without my waist straps done? Absolutely. That fire that I tried to pull that fat guy out of, I didn't have my waist belt. And that's the first thing I say when I talk about the fire was, listen, I know I don't have my waist straps done. I was having a rough night. Mm -hmm. You know, like just forgot. I just, I was chief. I don't put my gear on a lot. I forgot. But that doesn't mean that like whatever they did because they're a hard charger and they're like badass firemen. That means like, Oh my God, they're the greatest. No, you can't wear a helmet. That's 80 years old right. because it looks cool. Right. You live and learn from mistakes, but that's the big thing. You gotta, you gotta fess up to those mistakes. Now you got but me. In, order, in order to learn from them, you got to be willing to like read about them and understand what happened and, and then try to prevent them from happening again. I mean, if you're just going purely on being reactive and waiting for something to happen at your department to your guys, 
you know, that's, that's not the time to, to try to learn from it. Right. Exactly. So that's what you get from the social media. Like, Oh, how dare you talk about him? How dare you talk about the fire? You weren't there. Like, I'm not talking about the fire. I'm talking about corrective actions that we could take as leaders in the organization to not allow that problem. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you allow it, you don't say anything, right? You don't say anything. You're allowing it. Right. 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 right? So, you know, you got me all pissed off. Now. Well, there's people, you know, <laughs> there's, there, there's, there's people who get fired up about it because they, they think that you're, you know, they, they think that you're, coming down on the person you're disrespecting the person it's same thing with line of duties you know i mean you you talk about some of the line of duties and they're like oh you're trampling on the guy's grave no 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 that's not what it's about like we're not like even take the name out of it i I, actually that's what i that's my favorite thing to do take a niosh report take take the place take the name take all that crap right out of it right and then and then bring it into an officer class and whatever, you'll probably find a couple people that know where it's from and who it is. But well, you know what? Answer. Pull all that right out of it. So you can't say, we're talking about the individual. We're talking about the situation. I just posted a, a, an article, you know, not an article, but I just made a post about John Nance because it was whatever, however many years for the Nance bill through the hole, right? Did everybody do everything perfect that night? No, of course not. Right. But look at what we've learned from, you know, what – how to package a guy, how to get him up through a hole, this, all this stuff. I don't know anything about John Nance, nor do I give a shit. I'm sure he was a real hard charger, but we learn. We're firefighters. We learn from what happened. You know, oh, absolutely. it has nothing to do with him. Could have been a great guy. I don't know. I, I was, I was doing bailout, uh, bailout at my firehouse last night at a couple, couple new guys that hadn't been through it at all it was their initial cert and i i had him in the office doing a quick lecture with him and we used the black sunday video right you know i, I mean i get chills every time i listen to the audio and watch the black sunday video you know i mean it's it, yeah it's just you, you know i'm just sitting there and you know and these guys are watching it for the first time i'm watching it for probably the 50th time and you know I feel like shit when I'm watching it. I only imagine what these guys, but again, like you said, what came out of that, you know, what came out of that fire? Pretty much everything to do with where we are today and, and, and bailout, you know? Um, but I agree with you. Social media. Love it. Cause I get to meet great people like yourselves, but there's a lot of assholes out there too. <laughs> it's never ending. No, it is. It is. It is never ending. And and the bottom line is, you know, I mean, there are some experts out there, but the majority of people are not the experts they they portray to themselves to be. I just don't get why people can't all work together. Like I work together with Superior Emergency Training, right? We're we're both we're all firemen. They're career guys. If they get a job, you know, somebody calls them like, hey, we need some volunteer officer training. Yeah, John's the guy. You know, call John. If I you know, like my extrication class, all of them who own Jersey Shore Merch, who own Superior, are going to be instructing with me. So we're all we're all winning here. Right, you know right. what I mean? Like, what? I don't understand why people just don't work together. Like, it's, we should all be on the same team here. Right. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'm crazy. I don't know. No, that is how it should be. You know, I think that sometimes people. Th- have the impression that by like partnering with other people or lifting other people up or supporting what other people are doing, it somehow diminishes them. Yeah. Diminishes what they're doing. And that really couldn't be further from the truth because the more that we are, you know, collaborating with each other and learning from each other, the better all of us have the opportunity to be. Uh, And I, that sometimes it's hard to put that ego aside and, and have that view. But if every if more people did, it, it really benefits everybody, you know. Um, but I think it's hard for some people. It's hard for some people to to feel like if they support other um, firemen or other types of training or that kind of thing, um, that it's not going to diminish what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good good point. Yeah. Can you read that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post that was posted two days ago, right? Yeah. I'm fully right. involved. 
Absolutely 100% true, right? How many people yeah. are out there, you know, you're comparing, and, and look, John, you and I have had this conversation before, you know, you get yourself sucked into that vortex of comparing yourself to other people on social media. You know, why has this guy got 10,000 followers and I've only got 1,500, you know? Yeah. But again, what, what's the quality of the, what's the quality of the, of the people that are actually following you? You know, if you've right. got 1,500 followers and, 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 you've, and you know half of them because they're engaging mm -hmm. with your stuff and they're communicating with you and, and they're sending you emails and they're sending you direct messages and, like, you can really tell that they're, you know, they're gaining something from your message and you're gaining something from what they're offering to you, I'd rather have 500 people. I'd rather be involved with 500 people like that than right. 20,000 people that – you know, I don't know who the hell they are. Well, yeah. and, the, and what, like what you said earlier is very true. There's a lot of non-organic um, Instagram following, you know, right. because there's companies that, and you see them advertise all the time. And I get messages from them that says, you know, um, buy our plan and increase your followers by triple within the end of the month. And right. so they have like all these rubrics and stuff that you can pay for to get more followers, but they're not necessarily even real people or real accounts. They're just numbers. I didn't know that was a real thing. It's a real thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a real thing. Who does that? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, well, people that care about the numbers, the quantity and not the quality of well, what they're cause, doing. Well, because the, the fact of the matter with social media is if none of us knew one, boy, we have got way down the road uh, from yeah, water yeah, supply. Yeah. Were we talking about water supplies tonight? <laughs> what happened? If, at, least we, at, least we got, at least we got what we wanted to get in in. Uh, the fact of the matter is if, if the three of us did not know each other at all, right. And you're so you're surfing. So I'm surfing social media and I see Kara pop up doing whatever do it to lay in or not to lay in. If I see if, and Kara pops up on my feed doing whatever it is that she's doing. And I click on that picture. If I see that she's got 15,000 followers, I'm, probably going to dig deeper into that profile than if she had 20. And, and, that's, and that's just how most people are. If they see that you've got a big number attached to you, they're like, oh, who the hell is it? This person's a celebrity, you know? Whoa, you know? Street cred. <laughs> anyway. Street cred. Street cred. Yeah. That's what it is now. It is. Right. It is. Right. It's, the, it's the world we live in today. And especially now with everybody home, not able to do anything. You know? um, I didn't know that people pay for, I mean, I knew it was out there, but I didn't know like people really do that. Who does it? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons why people do it too is, you know, because at certain level you get to put like a certain button on your story. So it links to the merchandise that oh, you're selling right, or, right, yeah, you know, or whatever. after this amount of people, then you're monetized and like, you know, so there, I mean, a lot of people have like those kind of goals. Uh, for their social media as well. And so that's why they're doing it. I mean, like for right. me, that's not, that's not my goal with social media. You know, my goal is to spread the message that, you know, we need to try to work together to reduce line of duty deaths due to um, health reasons, you know? And so that's what I'm trying to put out there. And, and like what Brian said about when people are, are messaging you and saying, Hey, I'm just trying to get started, you know, working out again. I really appreciate the functional fitness that you're posting. Um, you know, I have a couple of questions. Do you mind answering them? I am so excited to interact with those people. Yeah. You know, th that, that's more meaningful to me than if somebody just clicks like and never interacts with me at all and never tries one of my workouts or, you know, right. never reads any of my posts about nutrition or, you know, anything like that. I mean, that, that's, I, that's great. I appreciate that they're following me, but if they're not really getting anything out of my message, there's not really any reason for them to be there. Yeah. 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 And then, and look, that's obviously that's why we interact because we kind of, we all feel the same way about what, what we're doing, what we're doing as a group and what we're doing individually. But, you know, I mean, when I get a message from like Iowa or Wisconsin or you know, from somebody that, uh, you know, I'm still like, it's still like a step back, you know, you're like, yeah. wow, this is, this is pretty cool. You know? And, yeah. and, and again, I'm no, I'm no expert in anything, you know? had some experiences over the years that I like to share and it is what it is, you know, yeah. Yeah. but cool. All right. So, um, final, final thoughts, final, final plugs. Everybody's got a, everybody's got some stuff going on, which is, which is good. So. Well, Kara, 
No, please go ahead. You're, you, you first. Right, well, uh, you have more going on than me. <laughs> getting back to teaching, which I'm very excited about. I hope to see people out there. I got my extrication class in uh, September coming up, which is exciting. I have one spot open now because I had a cancellation. Um, but uh, we'll have 30 people there. Nice. Um, so that's good. I'm excited for that. First, like, you know, the academy's getting back. We're doing some online training for Fire One stuff. And I'm selling my shirts. Um, partnered with Nine Line, they actually made the design. Uh, Chief Solly didn't want to deal with me, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> they didn't. They weren't going to put Euro helmets on it, so he said, "Frig that, I'm not." I bailed. Doing. I bailed. I said, like, I said, if there's well, no, I can't wait to get my shirt. Yeah, if there's no helmets or sports bras, I'm out. I'm <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I got those. Um, they donate a part to their business veterans. You know, they do their thing. Uh, and it gets my message out, of, you know, sweet shirt. So check out my Instagram. And uh, if people are even still listening, this is a long one. But we really got <laughs> hot, hot and off topic there. That's all right. It's all good. That's my favorite. Mine too. <laughs> Kara. That's it. Um, so I, uh, we're still a little bit shut down up here in our area in terms of my, um, and some of my in-person classes, um, but we are starting to pick back up again, and I'm actually going to be doing a little road trip on August 15th, heading down, downstate. She's to heading the frog downstate. Pond, for to the frog, well, the frog pad, what is that called? <laughs> You got it. You got. It. You better get it right before you walk in the door. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm already screwing up. So I'm going to do a little, uh, my little half day seminar down there, and I'm really excited about that. And I hope everybody is going to sign up for the workout and not be scared because it's going to be fun. What's the uh, What's the shutdown status? Wait, are you both from New York? Yeah. What's the shutdown status yeah. now? Because what uh, you guys are doing, we're doing. So I could tell you, you could tell me. Yeah, yeah. Still the same. Phase four, which really means nothing now. Fifty person max yeah. on basically anything. You know, he and what he shut he shut up shut down a bunch more bars today. You, say you could only get like a an appetizer or something. He put out. Well, there. yeah. So uh, last week he because the bars were starting to kind of do whatever the hell they wanted and. Everybody was going out and partying and most more in the city than up by us, I think. But um, he put a restriction in that um, if you were at a bar, you could not just be at a bar drinking. You had to be eating. You had to order food in order to drink at a bar. So the bars tried to one up him and they came up with Cuomo chips. They started, <laughs> they, one dollar. They started one selling dollar. $1 potato chip. chips. And people were ordering a bag of potato chips with whatever it was that they were drinking, and that was their food. Well, then he, he came back at them the next week and said, chips are not food, chicken wings are not food. You basically have to order like a hamburger, a, a sandwich, a meal. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Leave, I'll leave you two with this. I think between politics and the fire service. They are some of the dumbest, most stubborn people I've ever met in my life. I've been involved in emergency services, police, fire, AMS, since I was 14 years old, right? Worked in police departments. It, I don't know which is worse, politics or fire and police departments. Yeah. People, like, they just don't have it up there, really. Yeah, it's crazy. Everybody's, everybody wants to get back. You know, so yeah, so we so we had some we had some good stuff scheduled in our area. Same thing, we're going back to uh, the training centers open. We've got some stuff starting to open up, although it's difficult with yeah. the restrictions of what you can and can't do, and whether you mask or don't mask, staying socially distant. So that stuff. Now, uh, the inner shuts. I, I don't know if that's good. They're saying they're a hundred percent on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't so, know. That's so that stuff fired back up, which was good. Um, we were, Ryan Pennington was coming in to do his two classes for us, which was supposed to happen back in May. We moved it to September. Now I just bumped it out to 2021. So I canceled that. You can have can't, me out 
canceled something else that was supposed to happen on that same weekend. So now I'm trying to finagle a professional volunteer road trip to Jersey to possibly do some podcast coverage of said extrication class going yep. on. So uh, we're, we're going to be what? live on the scene reporting. Live on the scene reporting. Exactly. Well, I got I to gotta figure out how to do that. I'm like not at that stage yet, but I would like, I think it would be cool. I think that would be really neat. And if, uh, you know, my, the Tri other part of the trifecta here, you know, commits to maybe a road trip, it would probably be even more fun. So <laughs> well, I we am I the color do, announcer? <laughs> <laughs> we should do a day teaching of uh, your, your stuff, Kara, and then Brian and I could do stuff. Well, that's I agree. What yeah, well, yeah, we talked about that, right? We talked. What about a great that. idea! That Wish I thought idea. of it. <laughs> I wasn't involved in that conversation, obviously. <laughs> yes, you were. We have the text messages as proof. Well, uh, sometimes I just I'm say, "Sure, I'll do it." Well, you've already committed I'm to doing it. Still recording so. stuff. Yeah, you're gonna have so, to. Yeah, we you so, for, this off. so for those of you that are that you're getting like a real preliminary look at what's going on here and at, over an hour in so for the for those of you hard chargers that are sticking it out to the very Shut end off. today Shut um, it down. <laughs> yeah we are we are t we're talking about doing a a a day um an all-day class seminar that would include um what do we say leadership 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 mental health and and health and wellness right fitness yeah. fitness yes mm -hmm. so um kind of bringing all three things together and uh putting together a uh a, a class like between the three of us with the leadership you know we all have a little bit of leadership we all have a little bit of health we all have a little bit of uh you know fitness we all have a little story yeah we are the yeah. trifecta we are the trifecta yeah so we can make it work i think it, i think it would be good we can make it work. So that's the plan. All right. That's the plan. All right. Shut this thing All right. before it gets out of hand. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And this doesn't happen a lot, but it is Tuesday, the 28th. I am logging off with you guys. I am editing, and this will be live tomorrow morning on the podcast. Maybe not so quick on the YouTube on this one because that takes a little bit more editing. And then tomorrow night, turn around and uh, going to record another episode. We'll keep that one for a secret for next. That's next. You need, you need me again for that. That's one? the next. That's the next. That's the vacation episode. That's the vacation episode. So, shh. all right. Thanks, guys. All right. Jersey Shore Emergency Training, Saint Florian Fitness. Follow them on. The Insta, which we kind of blasted tonight, but follow them, please, on the Insta. And uh, hope everybody got something out of our um, water supply discussion that didn't last for as long as I thought it would. But, but, I, but I, think, I, think we got the, uh, I think we got the message across. So thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. Good night. Later. Later. Good night.